My name is Ryan Belgart. I'm the creative director and visual effects supervisor at Boiling Point Media. Recently, we've got the opportunity to work on some really cool movies, Adventures of Rufus, The Fantastic Pet. <laughs> Rufus! The Adventures of Aerie, My Robot Friend. <laughs> the Adventures of Jurassic Pet. Robot Riot, The Jurassic Games, Gremlin, Army of Frankensteins, and a lot more. What we specialize in here at Bowling Point Media is character animation and putting characters against live action plates. When the movie's finished shooting, we get what's called a plate and we'll bring that into a program called Maya where we have essentially what's like a virtual puppet of the character um, that has controllers that move different parts of the body and then we'll put the character in the scene and move them to whatever they need to be doing to interact with what's happening in that shot. And then we do what's called compositing. So you're really bringing all those layers together, you're doing things like rotoscoping, adding effects, anything like magic you want to add in. What I like the best about uh, my job and really CGI in general is that it's a virtual unlimited playground and anything that you can imagine uh, you can bring to life. I think that uh, here at Bowling Point we've got an incredible uh, skilled team of artists and creators that do an awesome job of taking a vision and really bringing it to life on screen. I'm really proud to work here. Hey guys, so if you're interested in learning how to do visual effects, uh, you're in luck because there are so many free resources out there and free software. Um, if you're a student, you can use the same software we use. It's called Autodesk Maya, and there's learning versions of that that are absolutely free. Uh, there's also Blender, which is a free software that you may have heard of that you can download. And you can do all of the kind of work that you're seeing on our demo reel and in big feature films, you can do that with this software. Uh, there's tutorials and free training on YouTube all over the place. So what I would suggest is just dive in, see if you like it, see which aspect of it that you, that you like, and just practice. I equate it to um, playing a musical instrument. Imagine the time it might take to learn how to play the piano or the guitar or something. I mean, you can equate that to this. This is the same, the same thing. I mean, it's gonna take a lot of practice, but little by little, you'll get better and better. And then uh, eventually, you'll look at something you've done and say, hey, that's, that's not bad. And then uh, hopefully one day, maybe, you'll be working with us and putting uh, some really cool visual effects into, into movies. So good luck and thanks for watching. Hey everybody, my name is Jacob Leighton Burns and I'm an editor here in Oklahoma City. What is editing? Well, it's this. Did you see that? We'll do it again. Did you notice how the camera went from a wide angle to a close-up and then back again? Well, that's editing. So an editor is the person who's given all the footage after a video or film shoot, be it a commercial or a documentary or even a feature-length movie, and they're the ones that cut it all together into one cohesive project. Editors can work on a project-to-project -project basis as freelancers, or uh, many of them work for production companies or ad agencies, marketing companies, news stations, or even some large corporations have their own in-house video department. So there's lots of opportunities for editors out there. What I love about editing is that every project is different and has its own unique set of challenges for you to figure out. So I'm constantly learning something new. I've been editing since I was in high school and I'm constantly amazed at the power of good editing in all forms of content. While editors are often working from a tightly written script, they're still the ones that get to choose when you cut from a wide shot to a close up or a close up to a wide shot or maybe even rearrange a scene or sequence and it can all have such a dramatic effect on the final product. I also really love working on documentaries because oftentimes you're not given a script and so I'm kind of given hours and hours of footage to kind of pour through myself and it's kind of up to me to find the story or create the narrative. And while that can be super challenging at times, once you get to the end of it, it's, it's so, so rewarding. Editing requires a really unique blend of technical skills and creativity. So you definitely need to know just basic computer skills. You need to have a pretty good grasp of the main editing software programs, how each one works and how they differ. And then you need really good media management skills you're gonna be given tons of footage and you need to keep track of it across various hard drives. You might be passing it to various people. It can get really messy really quick. So having those organizational skills are just absolutely key to a project being successful. But what I really think makes a great editor is someone who's interested in the art of storytelling. Whether you're working on a 15 second corporate promo or a three hour epic franchise film, it's all storytelling. And the way the footage is cut together can totally make or break a project.
If you're thinking about getting into editing, there's lots of things you can do now to start preparing yourself. Final Cut Pro, Avid, and Adobe Premiere are the most popular editing software programs, but there's many less expensive options out there that you can get and start practicing on now. And really just start paying attention to the edited video content that you already watch and see what they did and ask yourself why they did it that way. Whether it's your favorite TV show or movie, a music video, or just something funny you saw on YouTube, it all requires editing. And it's just a really great place to start to learn. Editing can seem really daunting at first, but once you get into it and you get the hang of it, you start to realize it's, it's kind of like putting together a jigsaw puzzle and you're the only one that can figure it out. It's a lot of fun, it's very fulfilling. I love doing it and will do it for a very long time. And I hope you'll give it a shot. Happy editing. Chukma, chin chukma taha ta. So holds your foot, Jared impachacha ha te. Chukasha saya, hashlaka sayopa, chukma shki, yakoke. Hello everyone, my name is Jared impachacha ha te. I'm a citizen of the Chickasaw Nation here in Oklahoma, and I'm a professional classical composer. So, just what is a Chickasaw classical composer? Well, when we think of our great composers throughout history, we see that Tchaikovsky, who composed the Nutcracker Ballet, was a Russian composer. Debussy, whose music influenced all kinds of movie music ranging from E.T. to Harry Potter, was a French composer. And Beethoven was most certainly a German composer. All of these composers greatly identified with their ethnic and national identities, and their music definitely sounds like it. So Jared Tate is a Chickasaw composer. I utilize cultural elements of songs, rhythms, and stories from Indian country and make those the foundation of my artistic works. I am very, very passionate about bringing a Chickasaw Indian voice to the world of classical music. People from all over the world who come from thousands of different cultures are and have been contributing their cultural voices to the fine arts like dance, film, literature, painting, sculpture, and of course, classical music. I absolutely love the feeling it brings to the tribal communities when they hear their own traditional songs and languages being presented on stage with a beautiful and powerful orchestra. It's like seeing a Marvel movie about your own people and your own history. This is an absolute thrill for me. To be a successful classical composer means that you have to be highly trained in this field. And this applies to any field, really. Engineering, masonry, restaurant management. The most successful people in any career adopt an attitude of constant training and learning. I studied piano performance for 15 years and participated in ballet, modern dance, and all kinds of theater and film. Today, there are many ways to achieve this education and training, but one thing is for certain. A person must practice and train diligently to be successful. I know that all people are born beautiful and brilliant. And I do believe that every person on this earth has an essential contribution to make. My presentation here focuses on my personal identity, not because I expect everyone else to call themselves a Chickasaw classical composer, but I do believe that a person's success in any creative field 
is highly influenced by their ability to discover and articulate their personal identity and experience. Hi, I'm AJ Gundell. I'm a full-time musician coming to you from my recording studio, and I'm a music supervisor. The job of a music supervisor is basically to coordinate all the music that you hear in visual media projects, and that's a fancy way of saying film, advertising, television, or internet. So for example, if you were at a film recently and you heard music in the closing credits of the film at the end, a song you recognize by Billie Eilish or Drake or somebody, music supervisor picked that. Likewise, if you're watching a TV show and there's a bar or restaurant and there's music playing in the background there, a um, song you recognize, maybe you don't. But again, that's a music supervisor's choice. You can hear music in all kinds of social media, YouTube videos and such like that all the time. And for example, in advertising, a favorite place and a great place for music to be used. Um, one of my favorite ads this past year was for Google. They used a song by the Beatles called Help. So of course, if you're on the search on the internet looking for help, what better song to underscore that moment and that commercial than the Beatles song. So the decisions and choices that are made by the music supervisor are based not just in creativity, but also in business. And so it's super important for the music soup, as we call ourselves, to deliver not just the emotional creative value of the music it's, as it's being married to and enhancing the film or TV or ad project, but also is doing so on a budget that's been created by the producers and directors of the project to deliver the music to the project in a cost-effective way. Creatively speaking, clearly it's important for us to understand what goes into making great music. The songwriters, the composers, the producers, the recording artists, all those professionals contributing their work to a project to enhance the, the on-screen drama, but also for us as supervisors to understand what that on-screen drama wants the music to do, what's happening emotionally there that the music is gonna underscore. Then in terms of the business and the budget, well, you know what we're doing? We're clearing rights to this music. We can't just pick it out of midair and we can't use it for free. We basically have to respect the rights of the, of the creators and license those rights for the film. And that's what the music supervisor is in the position to do to deliver the music on budget. I feel very fortunate to have been able to make a living making music for my entire career. And I, one of the things I've had to learn is that you have to be obsessively dedicated to both the music and the business to be successful in the music business. So the job of the music supervisor really helps to cultivate both of those things that are so essential, not only to success as a music soup, but also to success as a, as a musician in the business. Uh, I, I feel that if I can make a difference in your lives with my music and help to inspire you, then that's an, another upside to, to what I'm doing here on the, on the planet with, with my music. And so hopefully in these couple of minutes, I've been able to help you find a way that you might be able to explore your music and your passion for it, hopefully, to potentially make a difference in other people's lives as well. Um, I hope that's true, and I wish you all, all the best. Bye. Hello, my name is Grant Province, and I am a production sound mixer for television and film. Um, Production Sound Mixer is in charge of the sound department on a film during production. We're responsible for recording all dialogue, all sounds that happen during the production of the film, and that can be uh, dialogue, that can be uh, explosions, that can be footsteps, uh, doors creaking, whatever makes a sound. We're in charge of trying to get it as best as possible and as clean as possible um, while filming, which is extremely challenging sometimes. So, um, which kind of leads to the best part about it, about being a production sound mixer, is uh, troubleshooting and trying to figure out how to, to get clean sound 
and um, working with camera department, working with the director, props, wardrobe, uh, you name it, on a film set, we are constantly uh, striving to get good, clean sound. And uh, it's a, a daily challenge, and it's really fun to do, too, at the same time. Um, you got to be able to communicate very well with other, de other departments. You have to um, uh, communicate clearly on what you need and what you don't need. Um, and you have to be nice and professional about it um, and be able to uh, understand that sound is one of the things they can do in post. So sometimes you won't get clean sound. Um, you'll kind of have to sacrifice clean sound for something that's um, something you can only do on the day, like a car explosion or what if something that you, you can't really recreate and post that well. So um, that's what the sound department does and during production and what the sound mix, production sound mixer is in charge of that department. Um, and I would say for anyone interested in being a sound mixer or any position in film is to go out there and get experience. Um, being a PA is a great intro to a film set, learning what every department does uh, and seeing how they work together. And, um, and also just, and while being a PA or going into whatever you think you want to do, be safe about it too. And uh, that's the main thing, safety and having fun and learning and creating something, um, a great story. That's, that's the film business. Have fun.